Good morning, it's Bridget. Welcome. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. This is the chilly edition <laughs> because I had to turn the little heater off in the greenhouse because otherwise, if you're listening on your AirPods, it would bother you. Trust me, I did a test. It would bother you. So for the good of your listening pleasure, I have turned off the heater. So I'm a little chilly, but good news is I have coffee. I have coffee. Yes, I do. And I also woke up sexy as hell again, which is the mug that I have. If you've seen a picture of it on Instagram a couple of weeks ago, I was so excited about it and I cannot stop using it. It's great. It's kind of fun, isn't it? I love coffee mugs. Check out my merch on Above Life channel and on Fairy Grasshopper channel. There's kind of a scrolly bar that you can check out my merch. It's also in the links below. I have mugs also. So little plug there. <clears throat> okay. So a couple of things here. I have a blanket on to keep me cozy. So I am actually okay. I'm pretty warm right now. And I'm sitting in the greenhouse. It's early, early morning. So it is a bit frosty outside. And it's October, so that's what happens in Minnesota. And it's late, like mid, mid October. But I have a new development to share with you. I have a new chair. Oh, it's a big deal, let me tell you. It's a cozy rocker recliner chair, and it is so comfortable. I can hardly stand myself to not want to always just be in the greenhouse now and sitting in this rocker recliner chair. It's really awesome. Awesome. My old chair, not so comfortable. This one, awesome. So I'm joining you from my new rocker recliner chair. Yay. Hopefully you can hear that. Um, it is early in the morning and so I'm a little little sinusy, but I'm I'm fine. I'm not sick or anything. So don't worry about that because I know I'll get comments. I'm totally fine, you guys. It's the change of the season and the wee early hours of the morning letting the dogs out. Okay, so all of that normal day-to-day -day human stuff out of the way. Welcome to the podcast. It's nice to have you here. I enjoy our chats every week. I have some interesting stuff to chat with you about. This has been quite a week for me, energetically and spiritually. As you know, I work with a couple of different coaches on different things. I have a feelings coach, I have a counselor, and I have a divine feminine coach that I work with that I have been doing some energetic work with as well the past few weeks. And it just kind of happened the energy part, because I asked some questions about how to navigate or manage my energy in relation to other people to really use some discernment that isn't coming from the mind, but using discernment from an energetic perspective. So I have had some extremely profound energetic experiences where I've actually been able to receive the kundalini energy, the shakti energy from the earth, from the universe. And I have been able to receive energy like I've never received it before by choice and in a way that is really like root chakra, earth, human earth in to my chakras. And I have never been able to receive energy like that before Always, 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 I have attested to being a crown down girl, like a crown chakra. <laughs> that sounds so funny, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Crown chakra going down, flowing down into the body, super starry, really loving the, the universe and the cosmos energy and allowing the divine wisdom to come through my crown chakra kind of filtering through my mind and my third eye, which third eye has always been my primary channel. However, it turns out the last few years, I have really been discovering the fact that my truest, most powerful, most beautiful channel is my heart. And I am owning it now. I'm really owning my heart and embracing all of the, the uniqueness that that provides to me and 
filtering information in regards to this very razor sharp edge between pain and power and love and grief and this just it's just razor thin this one minute there can be this tremendous love and then the next moment there can be this this incredible profound feeling of separation and that leans into grief and what we would atone, um, attune to as a, like a grieving or a loss energy when there might not really be a physical tangible loss because energetically in the heart when we feel separate from it feels like a loss <clears throat> it literally feels like a a severing and when you have deeply deeply received energy experiences like I have had recently there's at least let's see there's at least two three that I can think of in the last few weeks and this week in particular has been two and I am like just my mind it's hard to even use the words that can express this understanding because I remember I've been doing psychic work for 17 years I also did um what uh, healing work, healing energy work, um, Reiki, you know, I went through all those attunements, gosh, years ago, probably 15 years ago, I did all that. And I don't, if you, if you know my work, you know that I don't attest or um, assign myself to one particular modality or technique. I, I believe in, in learning and expanding and growing and evolving to the level that you're at when you're there and not to be stuck in one particular way of doing anything, but be open to taking something that you learn a couple of different things and making it your own. That's, that's really the point, right? And so I don't do like one modality is what I'm trying to say. So I understand energy stuff and I do that. I read energy very, very well in my work. I do that. And so I work with grids and all that because I think of the clairvoyance, I can see them. I literally can see you not as a human, but as this kind of outline of an energy body. And then I see these uh, circular grids that are connected. It kind of looks like, um, do you remember the game of life? I've used this analogy before, but this is how it looks to me. Do you remember the little spinner that's zing, the little spinner thing? And it has all these different colors, and these different cutouts and numbers on it. And like a little kind of a button thing in the middle that you twist to turn. Like it looks like that, kind of like a wheel, but different it's got different layers and different dials and that's kind of what the grids look like to me that's what your energy looks like and based upon the topic or area that we're discussing different grids and different parts of grids will light up and I can with that sacred trust and safe and sacred space entering into your energy field working with your higher self and your spirit and your human consciousness aware of the process of the energy that is shifting during our session time together, realign things and acknowledge things and tell you about things that I wouldn't or you wouldn't maybe necessarily be able to identify or articulate with words, but you feel and sense and know something's up or that, oh yeah, that is off or oh yeah, I do feel out of alignment. And working with energy can put you back into alignment without having to go deep into your brain and discuss the childhood and that one time that your teacher was mean to you and all that like it doesn't have to be psychological even though we're having a human experience it everything does not have to be owned by the mind and so this heart space for me has been a tremendous place of great pain and also incredible profound freedom and and bliss and to come to terms with the fact that both of those things can coexist at the same time, you can, you can feel a deep pain and incredible elation and connection. It's like such, a, this, it's this, this incredible, almost like duality, yet there's nothing separate about it. Both can exist and coexist at the same time, but it's not because they're separate, it's because they're part of a whole. So it's like the shadow and the light. You have to have both or you don't understand what either is because there's no contrast 
to show this versus that. And then there's no ability to make a conscious choice to move into connection or to move into the understanding of what the separation is when the separation isn't even existing. Okay, so let me talk about this a little bit. Are you with me? Have I lost some of you? Okay, okay, here's what you need to do. Grab your coffee or your tea or your water and take a sip. Okay, let's take a sip here. Hmm. Okay, all right. Are we good? You okay? Didn't lose you? Okay. So, I'm going to describe this with sharing a part of one of the energy, um, how I understand now this receiving of energy. I got to a point recently where I was actually able to, with a sacred trust in my human body, my human form, with so much love within myself and so much connection to my personal light, my source inside me, I was able to receive, actually open up to receive, to pull in to my body, my energetic body into my chakras from the root chakra all the way up to the crown. I was able to pull in and receive, draw in, breathe in this beautiful life source energy and receive it like I've never received it. So there's kind of been this feeling of protection, almost this layering of protection that I've had myself, which is why I'm always crowned down, filtering through all the chakras to get to the root chakra. Because the bottom three chakras, the root chakra, the sacral chakra, and the solar plexus, which is basically the tailbone, the base of your spine, and all that that encompasses, okay, in your physical body and anatomy, and then also then your sacral chakra, which is all of that desire, that womb space, um, regardless of your anatomy and the reproductive organs, and then into the belly, that belly button, which is the sun chakra, which is your spirit, right? Solar plexus. So those three are like the drivers, the dominating, uh, connected, life-affirming, very um, energetic, I would say, spaces kind of theoretically. Not for everyone. Your chakras activate in different ways for different people. Totally fine. I'm just saying, theoretically, that's kind of the fire and the light and the, you know, the raw, the primal connection and the earth connection, the mother earth connection. And for me, I have really not experienced energy. Like when people breathe in in yoga and stuff and they do kundalini yoga and they bring it from the root chakra into the body, up into the body and in through the chakras and out the crown, I could never actually do that. In fact, funny kind of slash sad story, I've, I had tried to do kundalini yoga before early on in my experiences and even before I knew I was psychic when I was actually pregnant with one of my kids. I was trying to do some kundalini yoga. I couldn't do it. Like I literally got motion sick. I physically got motion sickness when the energy comes in at the base of my spine, into my body. I have got, it's made me motion sick. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't hold that. I couldn't receive it. It felt, it felt in, um, it felt very disruptive. It felt um, not safe for me to receive energy like that. It is very different, and I think it's because now, like, I feel like I kind of there was maybe this seal over me, like kind of cuddled over the bottom part of my body to kind of hold me in this kind of pure state. Of, of energetic, um, this kind of, I'm going to say pure state, because it literally feels like there's like this seal kind of this just co co coating over the bottom parts of my chakras to receive energy that way, to, to, to um, it's almost like until the time in which it was right for me to be able to receive it. And so I did. And then 
I could feel the energy as I was breathing moving up into my body and and mixing with my light energy and so I was breathing in this energy and all I can describe it as is this I opened and earth was received I received earth I received her energy and it was so profound and it moved me so much that I, I mean, there's no words to describe the flow of this energy and the be, ability to, re, I just, it's like I just opened and I just received it and, and the earth energy that, and it came in to my body and it didn't just like stay in my lower chakras. It went all the way up, right? It went right to my heart. It's like it, its goal was to touch my heart. And that was not a problem. Went right into the heart, did an infinity sign. Um, and then there was like this mixing of my energy and earth energy. And it was like this kind of pulsing rhythm, rhythmic energy. It was like pulsing. It was like up and down. And, and it was this like penetrating. It was just, it was so, it was unlike anything I'd ever experienced in my body. And it was all my energy was lit up. My entire body was just lit up and I could feel it. And it was like the entire universe I could feel inside me, not contained or held by me, but one with me. And then I got to a point where I know I was experiencing this in my body with my light body and my energy body. And then I, as I was breathing, I found it hard sometimes to kind of breathe. Like I felt very, I felt a lot of emotion as I was breathing. And so when you kind of start to feel that emotion in your heart space, especially whenever the energy touched my heart, I was like, oh, oh my goodness. Like it was like this, a cracking open a little more, like a little more of an opening where I didn't think I could open anymore. (laughs) And it just opened me up a little more and a little more and a little more. And I didn't realize the limitless capacity in my heart to open so much. And to hold so much light, which is love translated, by the way, when you say light, it's really love translated energetically. And I, and then, then my physical body would like kind of sob almost like it was like, you know, when you cry, like you're crying really, really hard, like you're just feeling and you're sobbing and you're like, and you can't breathe and you can't like catch your breath. Like I felt like that. And I couldn't hold it in. Like I was trying to kind of quiet myself or calm myself a little. And I couldn't do it. There was no containment. And it felt just beautiful. I guess that's the best word, beautiful. In this state of this heart awareness where my heart really felt free. And, and expanded and, and safe and natural and open. <coughs> and hey, I'm getting choked up. Yeah, my throat chakra is really going here all of a sudden. And then there was a moment where I like left my body, like I transcended. But here's the thing is I didn't actually leave my body. I was connected. I had a taproot into the earth. I was connected to earth. I was connected to her. I could feel that, that the divine feminine energy, that just powerful pulsing life source energy. I could feel it. It was all inside me. I could feel it all, everything. And I didn't leave my body to get away from it or escape. I like ascended beyond the parameters of my physical body and into this like conscious awareness in my etheric field that I hadn't taken up before intentionally with my chakras. Usually I see my etheric field as a layering outside my body, six to 12 inches outside my body, but I was up and beyond my human body. I transcended it so that my my energetic body was encompassing my human body and it was all one. It wasn't separate, it was one during this energy, this, this breath work, this breathing. And then I was up above my crown chakra. And so I instantly like from my heart, I went up above my crown chakra and I was hanging out above my crown chakra. And it kind of felt like maybe I wasn't in my body, but I was because my body was in me. It's hard to explain this. My human body was in me, in my soul body. 
not the other way around. My soul wasn't in my body. My body was in my soul. Do you see? It was so incredible. And then after, I just felt so much peace. There was just this incredible peace. And I kind of calmed myself, you know, I slowed the energy down and came to a center point and allowed, instead of this kind of rhythmic pulsing energy, it was like this quiet hum and a soft warmth, like a fire. And it felt like a fire, like cozy fire, like, which I could use right now. Let me just tell you, I need a wood burning stove in here. That would be awesome. And I just felt warm. I just felt warm inside, like glowing. And I just felt peace. And I was able to kind of go about my day and my evening, actually, it was at night. I slept okay. And the next day, though, I felt almost like, I don't want to say aftershocks, but I felt kind of like this clearing, emotionally clearing, but not intense emotional clearing, just kind of waves of emotion. And I think it was my mind trying to understand what happened energetically and how all of a sudden I would open myself up and be so vulnerable and just wide, pure wide open to receive energy from Earth, from this cosmic consciousness, from this this union, this partnership with that earthy energy and not and I think and not like be cautious or 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 not not pay attention to my mind at all during the process I transcended that right and so I think the next day my mind was like wait a minute what happened what exactly happened there what was that about what is that is that something we we should do again or not do again maybe we should not do that again maybe it was like an out of control no it was this it was a profound experience and and it felt it was a very healing for me it was so healing and so then i reached out to my divine feminine coach and i said okay so i know we just had session like 2 days ago but i need to have another session with you cuz i had this i've had this experience i'm trying to kind of understand how to process it and at the same time i'm recognizing how my empath energy and how I'm in relationship with people is part of this understanding too. So how all this kind of fits and works together, I don't know. And I I need to talk about it because I want to feel open, being able to be open and receive energy when I choose to do that and in relationship with whatever elements I'm working with or whatever, um, consciousness I choose to connect to in that way or or in human form you know I want to use this consciously because it's so powerful and so profound and so so beautiful and so connected and yet the next day I felt so separate from that energy and I I couldn't even think about it because it felt like when I thought about it I felt sad because it wasn't with me it was like now that this energy this earth energy was inside me and part of me when I actually couldn't breathe it in and feel it with every single breath of mine it felt like it wasn't there and then I'm like wait a minute now it's gone it's gone I lost it I lost it because going through day-to-day life you're not always thinking about this incredible kundalini energy or shakti energy and when it's not there and that obvious it feels like it's not there, but really it is there. There's always this connection. There's always this union, but you have to kind of transcend the real life day to day, going to the grocery store, doing this, doing that, and step up into this higher consciousness above the crown chakra, which is not leaving your body. It's just seeing your body and the whole of the experience is energetic and human together. And so I couldn't do that on my own because this was new for me, right? So I talked to my friend who is super good with energy and psychic stuff and shamanism. And my divine feminine coach is what I call her. And she and I, we had a, we had a conversation about it like the next day. And it was an incredible, it was like a 30 minute conversation. And then all of a sudden we went into, she's like, okay, let me, let me show you how to work with this energy. It's the kundalini energy. It's the shakti energy. And she said, 
you are you you are now utilizing it. It's almost it was almost like a not an initiation, but a yeah, kind of was like an invitation into working with energy in this way. And so like root chakra up, basically. Earth and root, right? And so I'm like, okay. I would love this because it feels so grounded. Like I felt so in my body and more in my body than I've ever felt before. But when you're so in your body and you feel your body more than you've ever felt before, you also feel all of the gaps and all of the opportunities for a deeper, more profound connection in other ways and other relationships and other in the ways that you do things and how you show up in the world and who you show up for and the choices you make. Like that's a thing, right? So I had this incredible second experience with my coach and because I trust her so much, I was able to really let go and just like we did this incredible breath work. Unbelievable. I've never done breath work like that. When I think of breath work, I think of meditation and like the so hum, the breathing in the nose and exhaling out the mouth. Maybe the fire breath when you do yoga, but that always felt weird to me because it was always in my belly. It was never coming from my root. I couldn't quite get that kundalini thing. And maybe it was because it was like too intimate for me and too sacred that I couldn't like do it like when somebody else was telling me to do it. I had to do it on my own in a trusted space with a trusted partner, which was earth energy, right? And boom, you know, it just, hello, open, worked, no problem, right? And so had this incredible, I mean, I, we were in like, oh my gosh, it was probably about an hour and I was doing I, all sorts of breath work. And I was like, it's funny, you guys, I was like loud. And in fact, so I'm in the greenhouse room, right? And it gets hot in here and it was kind of warm. Well, I was warm because I was moving energy, right? So I'm like taking off my sweatshirt and I have my, you know, tank top on and I'm pushing open the windows and I'm like when I'm exhaling I'm like ah you know I'm just like ah you know like letting it out whatever very animal like let's just say that so the neighbors are probably like we have five acres but still you could hear I'm sure it was echoing <laughs> in fact I had to tell my kid who has a room just down the hallway I just say you know if you heard me like making strange sounds or noises it was just part of my <laughs> session <laughs> Probably like, what the heck is happening? It sounded like I was killing somebody in here, which I kind of was. I was letting go of some dead, dead weight energetically, some old belief systems that don't serve me anymore, and to step more, embracing more my fullness and my power and the ability I have to connect and be in relationship, like with the elements, with energy that is here to serve me and to be in communion with. And it was quite the experience the session I had and I actually at the very end of it too I was like okay I just need to rest and she was like oh you did such good work I'm like yes I just need to lay here now (laughs) I need to rest you know my body was like whoa you know and so and then I have since practiced moving and flowing the energy and I can do it like in a heartbeat now I'm like wow this is getting this is getting um not easier but it's like it's it's just really natural so yeah you guys wow so that's my little story and i i am going to share on my fairy grasshopper youtube channel a little video about it i mean it's personal for me but it's also so profound and powerful and i think that there's other people that have experiences with energy and it's confusing and it's not it's hard to put into words and other people think you're, you're like afraid to talk to people about it because you think that they're going to think you're weird or something. Maybe it's just like psychic stuff. Like I used to think that too. So I know I get a lot of people who work with me who are like, yeah, my spouse thinks my psychic work is crazy or, or my sister thinks I'm nuts or my mom doesn't understand this stuff and, or whatever. And they don't have to, nobody else has to get it, but you have to, Acknowledge the gift of what you bring and how you connect. And energy is an incredible way that you do that. And it can serve you and fuel you and inspire you and move you forward. It can help you get through your days if you have a a hard job, a stressful job, or you're dealing with a health issue or crisis, or just maybe you're building a business, or maybe you're a writer. And maybe there's so many ways that you can utilize this beautiful energetic connections that you have 
if you can bring it in and use it in a healthy way. And I don't want to say on command, but intentionally, let's say it that way. So yeah, so this is interesting. So I'm looking forward to more sessions to for myself, instead of just doing meditations, I'm using this energy and the breathing and the pulling the energy in and like not pulling it in necessarily, but um, yeah, I kind of am. I'm pulling it up and then holding it in my different chakras and kind of letting it go out and then kind of I'm working with it. Like I'm really working with it in ways that I didn't ever expect to really, but it's beautiful. It works well with my element of light and the element of fire that I hold in my body. The fire element is a dominant element for me. It has been for years. Um, you probably heard my story on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube where I talked about the fire element and being a fire bearer. And if you've been in any of my divine feminine groups or sessions, you know that I talk about the fire and element and then I align with that with Kali Ma and um, work with Shakti energy. You've seen that most recently on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube and now the primal goddess. And so there's a lot of um, beautiful fire elements here too. So if you're the, a person like that, then you probably resonate with the energy that I'm sharing as well. This is a pretty hot uh, Sunday morning coffee with Bridget. Um, <laughs> interesting way to start your day hopefully you'll <laughs> do it maybe later maybe I'll post this one a little bit later give you some chances to kind of step into your day but I think it's important to share experiences like this with you because I think it encourages you then to be able to do the same and if you need to have session with me to talk about energy and stuff you can do that you can totally request session I actually book directly on my Facebook page at Bridget Inspired so that's an easy way to book session with me all right I hope I've inspired your spirit today. I've certainly perked your interest and curiosity. I think about energy. <laughs> I hope so. Right? Filled you with some hope and encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all, and you get to live it. And just live it.